President Joe Biden sat down in a rare one-on-one -on -one interview on Tuesday with Washington correspondent Rashad Hudson in the battleground state of Pennsylvania. Here's what the president had to say when asked if he's concerned that stubborn inflation could hurt his reelection bid. We brought down inflation considerably by over two thirds and it is being stubborn and not going down to the two percent we need, <clears throat> but it's significantly different. Grow the middle class and that way you have the poor have a way up and the wealthy still do well, but they got to pay their fair share. For example, if those thousand billionaires just paid 25 percent in tax instead of 8.3 percent, we've raised 500 million dollars. I mean billion dollars. The fact is we have the strongest economy of any country in the world. We've got more to do. We've got more to do. We've created 15 million new jobs and the salaries are outpacing the cost of inflation. Biden also touched on the recent supplemental aid for Ukraine that he sent to Congress on Monday. The idea that we're going to let, we're going to walk away and let, let Putin just continue to annihilate and murder so many innocent Ukrainians, we have an interest in this. NATO is a, a critical element of American security. And the, what makes us think if we don't support the attack by Putin on Ukraine and stop it, help stop it, then NATO's going to stay together. So there's so much at stake here, and I believe we can get it all done. Biden had to say when asked about his plan to win back pro-Palestinian voters. Well, I've had I've been meeting with them, number one. Number two, I made it clear that uh, we have to vastly increase the amount of uh, food, water, health care going into Gaza. And I made it clear to Israelis, don't move on Haifa. It's just not, I mean, it, anyway. It, okay. Which one do you want, which one do you want to do They're all related. We're gonna, we're gonna, he wants to tax wealthy people more so we can raise more revenue so that we can then send it all to Ukraine and to Israel and to Gaza. Um, frankly, I think there's continuity there in what his worldview is, which is not being sufficiently attentive to the needs of Americans dealing with high inflation. Yeah, That's so my I, view, but go ahead. I, I was distracted there by the end because he said don't move on Haifa, didn't he? Did that he mean don't move on Rafa? I think he meant Rafa. He's not beating the yeah. age accusations no. with, with re repeated gaps like this. I mean, it, this, took, this kind of a thing took Gary Johnson right out of the race. What is Aleppo? <laughs> and now we have Joe yeah. Biden. I guess, that out of like nowhere <laughs> question, by the way. <laughs> right. A totally unfair question. The guy who asked it later said, yeah, it was pretty mean of me. Right. Haifa is in Israel, not Gaza. Yeah. yeah. I don't, okay, so... Assuming that he means don't move on Rafa, the problem is that he says I have a red line on Rafa, but he also says he's never going to stop giving Israel aid. He says it's a red line on Israel not retaliating um, against Iran, but he also says, always in the same breath, I'm never going to stop give Israel aid. And then the idea that he's met with pro-Palestinian activists, community leaders, or whatever, met and with, that I is think he's sufficient. been jeered at by them. I don't know right. if that's he's met. He's literally had the, having to cancel yeah. stops at colleges because he cannot go anywhere without being heckled. And to be clear, this isn't some niche fragment of his base. Overwhelming majorities of Biden voters, of Democrats, want there to be a permanent ceasefire now. Um, and so when he's talking about sending more aid. The problem is that people want the destruction to stop. Yesterday, the IDF bombed a preschool killing, a, a playground rather, killing 11 children. More aid doesn't do that. In fact, some of the aid drops have themselves resulted in killing children as they fall from the sky. So this is a wholly inadequate response. And if this is the kind of interview that he plans to give to reassure the public leading yeah. up to the election day, he's in I mean, big doing, trouble. Doing more foreign aid is just for understandable reasons, not a incredibly popular thing to do for Americans of all political stripes. Um, he talked about that. He talked about still clinging to the same narrative on Ukraine, that this is existential, that this is about U.S. security, which is not something that I think a lot of um, American voters believe, frankly, at this point. This has been going on for so long. Well, because they've said we out loud the existential so many times, it's a proxy war. The, yeah. We are weakening Putin, that these are the objectives. And that's what's, I think, really perverse about that sort of an answer. Of course, 
people should have uh, the utmost compassion for what Ukrainians are going through. They're in a place where they're recruiting, they're have, putting uh, mandatory conscription and recruiting 50-year-olds to fight in right. their war and recruiting women to fight well, in the war. Well, that's why we need to bring it in. But that, right, that's not what he said. He said this is about U.S. security. He said NATO is, is an important part, component of the U.S.'s own security. Yes. And so they're doing all of those things because the war is going on longer than it needed to. And the critique isn't that you should abandon Ukraine or the U.S. shouldn't have, or as a, right. as a, humani on a humanitarian or ethical matter, support for Ukraine, but that the U.S.'s behavior in this conflict has extended the length of time the war has progressed because it intentionally derailed um, de-escalation talks early on in the process because it was in the U.S.'s objective, it was the U.S.'s objective to weaken Russia, that that was the priority, not eliminating the cost to Ukrainians who are paying for this with their lives. Well, right, and have we encouraged them to hold out by saying that we're going to continue to send them um, military financial support for as long as it takes? That was the Biden White House's own line, that we will continue to support them as long as they want to fight. We will be with them, even though American public opinion has long since soured on doing so. And again, we have this is part of the reason I think his reelection is flailing, that he doesn't understand or appears not to understand about all the problems we have at home, uh, the, the high cost of groceries and gasoline and houses and education and everything, healthcare, everything yeah. is really bothering Americans and they don't trust that he has a plan to fix it and he talks about all these other things. Yeah, so getting to that inflation point, Put it very simply, I had Richard Wolf, the economist, on my podcast some months back, and he really laid it out in a way that I thought was so digestible and clear. Inflation is prices raising on things, right? It's not some magical cloud of influence in the air and people, it's like the Fed. The, inflation is when things cost more. So if you look at the sectors that are driving inflation, the question that Joe Biden should be trying to answer is how to bring those costs down. And it's not all over. That's part of what this debate has been about. Is inflation up? Is inflation not? Is, is life better than it was two years ago, four years ago, or is it not? Is that it depends on what sector that you're looking at. So there have been times when Democrats have been able to accurately argue inflation is down, things are better. But in these discrete sectors, including cost of food, cost of housing, cost of education, cost of transportation, those have been real drivers of inflation. Those are big ticket items for normal Americans. Less so when you're very rich, your food costs aren't a big part of your budget when you're making over $400,000 a year. Right. But if you're a normal person, then right. you are really feeling those. No, those people things. aren't voting for Joe Biden anyway because he wants to raise their taxes. <laughs> well, okay. The question, to be clear, it's Donald Trump who just got exposed in a fundraising meeting where he raised millions of dollars from millionaires and billionaires saying, I will not raise your taxes right. and making That's jokes what I'm about saying. it. That was, that was Donald Trump. Yes. Okay. For people who don't want their taxes okay, I'm sorry. I'm raised, misunderstood. Donald I'm Trump is your president. Sure. I mean, that's for billionaires who don't want their taxes raised. Donald Trump is your president. Yes, that's that's accurate. I don't know how many billionaires are. Well, watching for anyone the show. under, we I mean, we discussed point, with the IRS is lies about who was going to be audited. All those audits falling or disproportionately on people. Even though what Janet Yellen said, I forget it was four hundred thousand income or two hundred thousand. There's you know people in that middle income tax. A bracket who are having there. So the point I wanted to make is that the cost, the cost, the cost of goods is going up. But Joe Biden or any other person who wants to actually bring down inflation, including Donald Trump, who by the way doesn't say I have a plan for it. He just says magically when I'm in office it's going to be better. When I was in office it was better. Okay, before the pandemic, right? Fine. Is to be having conversations about how to bring down the cost of those kinds of goods. How do you bring down your cost of housing? Have you heard Joe Biden or Donald Trump for that matter or RFK Jr. for that matter talking about their housing plans? No, I wish you. Have you, have, you, have, have you heard them talking about, well, I will give Joe Biden some credit for at a certain point messaging around this cor cor corporate greed uh, point and various stories about the egg industry and some other industries intentionally inflating the cost of goods in this post-pandemic uh, period of time and going after them on like a, I think they live in an antitrust basis because there are these very small handful of, of conglomerates that are in, in charge of all of our meat and egg and dairy production. But on the whole, they are talking about this in such abstractions that it, of course, is gonna lead the public to say, you don't really know how to get a handle on this and you're not trying to get a handle on it. And to the extent that there was some effort to make some movement on bringing down education costs, it was this half measure where one, he pursued student debt policy in a way that was frankly rigged to fail and without doing the other half of actually addressing the fundamental root of of why student uh, college costs have escalated, oh. which is that you need to invest in free public colleges and universities. And by taking a Bernie-style plan, lopping its head off, and sending this Frankenstein monster out to the world, he has done nothing but create controversy without actually delivering right. any relief 
for or very little relief for student debtors. Well, the only place in which I agree with you there, yes, just forgiving the debt without doing anything to change the underlying structure of how higher education is paid for would in fact be a wildly inflationary move and it wouldn't be shown. it wouldn't be studies have shown that it's the opposite in fact and that, that they're not going to raise the price if you forget. yes and that turning on no, studies inflation. have shown that subsidizing the price of it has it has increased the cost of it. We should That's absolutely what studies get uh, students at experts back on the show. But okay, the, we'll get some of my experts for a change as well. How about that? Uh, that's fine. That turning student debt on, um, which Biden chose to do last year, actually has, is driving inflation. Turning student debt payments back on is driving inflation. So we can have that conversation, but the point is, these are things that are costly. When the people. government subsidizes something, when the government pays for something, that raises the price of it. It's the most ironclad and obvious law in all of economics. So. When, the when people are saying that they are struggling with various goods, the question needs to be how the government can intervene to bring the price of goods down. And what we've seen routinely is that every effort to try to do so is either impeded by conservatives, impeded by Democrat, conservative Democrats. They're impeding the it because they're Party. trying to stop the prices from going up. But go ahead, go ahead. Um, and so you're, you, you end up in a limbo where you don't have any relief. And I do think one other piece of this inflation puzzle, why people are feeling like their cost of living um, are, is so much more challenging than it was in the past, is that we had all of these pandemic era programs expire. So we, for the first year or two of the Biden administration, people were experiencing the relief of having a child tax credit, of having child care relief, of being able to live their lives without uh, being so solidly under the yoke that working class people have been used to. Subsistence living, paycheck to paycheck. There's not a single district in, in the United States of America where someone working full time at a minimum wage salary can afford a one bedroom apartment. These are the kind of issues that Biden could be speaking to more directly if he wants to make it look like he's actually working on inflation. Instead of talking about what the Fed may or may not do, it's independent from the White House, he cannot direct them, but it seems like he's all offloading responsibility on some amorphous entity in the cloud. And that's why he's getting flack for what people are experiencing right now. Yes. Um, overall, what do you make of him you know, agreeing to do this interview? We've dinged him for not doing enough um, sit-down interviews at all. Obviously, his campaign wants to inspire faith that he's able to react on the fly, that he can do better in sit-downs than he does in some of those press conferences where his mind has seemed to wander on very direct questions about Israel and about you know, which ministers he's met with recently and stories he's trying to recollect. Yeah, I think as long as he's talking about uh, his red line being not moving troops into Haifa, he probably shouldn't do any more of these interviews. Mm. Didn't know that was on the table for a potential <laughs> military action. More rising right after this.